older butch sightings. <laughs> in airports <laughs> make me feel like I am part of an army. <laughs> it's a quiet, button-down, peacekeeping brigade that nods. <laughs> nods instead of saluting. Silver hair and eye wrinkles are earned instead of stripes or medals. Okay, so I wrote, I wrote that one down and it went, I see you're still over here. <laughs> I wrote that one down and uh, it was in gender failure and then gender failure got um, translated into German and so I got, this, I got this very earnest letter from the German translator who said, Ivan, um, I'm, I'm translating uh, this one a bit and uh, well, in Germany, we don't like to um, sort of uh, uh, glorify our military for all the obvious reasons. <laughs> so um, we need to change that. Go with the same spirit, but change the analogy if we could. So um, I've come up with this. Let me know what you think. So they have written um, that older butch sightings in airports made me feel like I was part of a collective gardening cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wrote them back and I was like, mm, it doesn't really capture the sort of vibe I was looking for, actually. Um, so we settled on hockey team. <laughs> I'm a witness to a hit and run accident. It is dark and rainy. A sports car clips a pedestrian, knocks her down, and then screeches away. I call an ambulance. I wait with the older woman while it comes. A policeman shows up and takes my name and phone number and address and writes them in his book. He narrows his eyes at me under the knife shape of light coming from the street light above us. He appears to be considering something. Do you, uh... Do you have a gender? <laughs> He asks me. Yes, I do. <laughs> kind of long couple of seconds of silence sort of hang in the dark between us. Hey, he says, there is no need to get smart about anything. Are you and I, are we gonna have a problem here? His words are clipped. They're severe, like his brush cut. Hey, I say. I'm the witness here, yeah? I stuck around. I called you guys. I, I thought I was the good guy. Well, we can change that in one second if you don't cooperate. I'm, uh, I'm female, I tell him. <laughs> you sure about that now? I don't say anything. I just keep looking down. That's better, he says. Right? <laughs> just for the record, glaring at me in disgust in the women's change room at the gymnasium will not magically make me more feminine. <laughs> Believe me, you, the statistics are in on this one. Yeah. If dirty looks could make me conform, it would have happened years ago. Does it make you feel any better? Because it sure doesn't add any charm to my workout experience, just so you know. Oh, P.S. I probably should have told you that you have a gigantic period stain on the ass of your yoga pants. But, well, you didn't seem all that approachable. <laughs> okay, 
two more and then we'll wrap it up. Kid at the grocery store. I don't want vegetables. You don't give me what I want. You are a bad daddy. <laughs> the father says, bad daddy? <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> and right there, magically, all of a sudden, he got way better looking to me. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I have to do that. There's two more, actually. <laughs> so I'm flying to Calgary, Alberta. No checked luggage. I'm waiting for my suitcase to go through the x-ray room. I see on the x-ray screen a giant dildo in someone's carry-on bag. <laughs> so I glance nonchalantly at the woman beside me. She's being totally cool. So I look over at the man on the other side of me. He's not even paying attention. <laughs> then I realized that is my bag <laughs> on the screen. And at first I was very confused, having just packed my bag for a solo overnight work gig, saw any form of dildo of any kind. Now the technician's now looking at me. The guy smiles, the woman smiling at me. It's a microphone. <laughs> I say it out loud to nobody and everyone. It's a vocal microphone! <laughs> Nobody says anything. <laughs> microphone! <laughs> I repeat. <laughs> the other day, an old woman, maybe like mid 80s, she stopped me while I was walking the little dog to tell me I looked a lot like her now departed husband did when she first met him way back in the 40s. He had good hair like you. He was a snappy dresser. He liked to take me dancing. But was he a good husband? I asked her. She just looked me up. And she looked me down. She said, well, he was good enough that I'm smiling at you 60 years later. 